Yes, welcome everybody to this first session of Science and Innovation Day that is arranged by STC Research Center at Mid Sweden University. Woo! <laughs> My name is Christine Gradström and I will guide you through this session. And first of all, I would like to inform you all that this uh, session is recorded and broadcasted live on YouTube. So if you don't want to be on YouTube, you can save your questions to the break. Otherwise, just feel free and raise your hand and ask your questions to the speakers. So this session, we will talk about data, the key to success. And we will meet two companies at Mid Sweden University that's collaborating uh, with us. Um, they're quite new companies, both of them, and then we'll tell you about their journey towards data-driven development. Yes. So our first speaker just started the collaboration, and she will talk about how it started and what she learned so far at the company. So I welcome you, <laughs> Johanna Johansson at Plantvation. Thank you. Okay, so my name is Johanna Johansson and I'm the CEO and commercial man manager at Plantvation. And uh, we are a company that develop cultivation technology for the forestry industry. Uh, we are still a startup company, but in growth scale. And we have a, a fully scale uh, reference uh, system um, at Holman Skog, one of Sweden's forest companies. And we, during this year, we we delivered also a trial unit to one of the world's biggest forest companies in uh, South America. Uh, we have about 30 years experience of cultivation technology within the company, uh, but, are working, but have been working towards the forestry for the last uh, 10 years. And uh, we are working towards the vision to become a world leading provider of forest uh, uh, cultivation technology and uh, our mission is to uh, contribute to uh, on, um, a higher speed of uh, reforestation to mitigate climate change. Uh, so our nurseries are for forest, our customers are forest nurseries and they are um, uh, they have fallen behind when it comes to automation and process based uh, uh, processes if you compare to the rest of the forest industry, the pulp and paper and so on. So they are still very manual and very dependent on the, uh, the weather conditions and personal expertise and, and so on. But due to the climate changes, they, have, uh, they are now in the spotlight and uh, the demand of uh, forest seedlings is highly increasing and today they have a hard time to, uh, to keep up with the demand. Uh, so uh, a change has to, a, ch a change is required and uh, that's what we are trying to contribute to. So our technology is called the QS Greenbox and uh, it's a fully, uh, fully automated and vertical cultivation system that is installed in industrial buildings. So it's a closed environment so in that way you can produce uh, seedlings all year round. And uh, here we can fit 2 million seedlings on wa only 100 square meters, which is about 40 times more efficient than the traditional way. And in here, the whole, the whole growing process is automated and digitized. Uh, so you, have, um, you, you put in the recipe on an industrial operational panel and then the system goes by itself. Uh, so in that way, we create a very optimal climate for the seedlings and achieve very high results. And um, yes, since it's closed environment and we have a, s a special irrigation technology that m means that we don't have water in the whole system and so on and weighted control of the watering, it's a very dry and clean and uh, all free environment which, uh, which the minimize the risk for diseases and so on. And it's also very sustainable since we can recover almost 90% of the energy that is used and the water usage is minimal and we do not have to use any pesticides. Uh, we work with different kind of uh, um, product models in different sizes. 
So we have the big scale system ready for the market and as well the QS innovation box which is a small trial unit that has the exact same um, functions as the big scale so you can use it for R&D projects and to verify this technology before doing big scales implementations. And um, yeah, so in this system, we have a very good technology base and the whole process is digitized. Uh, so we see a very good possibility to um, keep developing the, the digitized uh, solution in this. So, so right now we have started a partnership with uh, Mitt Universitetet, our customer Holman and uh, Bron Innovation uh, to look into uh, we are doing a prototype project to uh, developing the the AI and so on in this. So, yeah, that was a little introduction about Plantvation and how we work with technology and towards AI. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Do we have any questions right now to Johanna? Please just raise your hand if so. Otherwise, we will move forward to Matthias. He is a professor at Mid Sweden University and head of STC Research Center, and he will talk about technology. Yes. Uh, I will talk about technology and also the innovation process, which I think uh, is a good example of uh, how research and uh, company needs can meet. So you can skip that. Uh, going through this innovation process, uh, going to a proof of concept to see what are the potential in this technology for this specific problem. Uh, so as uh, Johanna mentioned, there, there is a digitized uh, process. Uh, there is automation. Uh, at some extent to drive this uh, this system but uh, there is an idea to do more with this to automate even more perhaps be less dependent on experts to do uh, when to do what uh, in this case uh, Brun, Brun Innovation has uh, a project uh, which is called uh, Digital Innovation Hub, <coughs> where uh, they met Plantvation and discussed uh, how their needs could be met with the different new technologies, which ended up in a pre-study, uh, looking at different possibilities from their product, their needs, to see what kind of uh, technologies could benefit their business. So in that part, the, the great part, it was Brun Innovation and the consultancy, management consultant, Pro and Pro, that did this pre-study, which ended up in that in the growth uh, process that characterizing that could benefit from AI technology. Uh, looking at the plants, be able to determine uh, in what stage are these plants uh, in growth-wise. Basically using uh, camera technology, uh, image uh, analysis methods, where you, from the growth cycle, uh, in this we grow it, I think it was like two weeks old to eight weeks old uh, in this and to be able to basically characterizing the growth cycle in parts of a day accuracy which is a bit challenging uh, looking at what kind of different stages do we find in this data it could uh, we haven't it specify the stages now we have just uh, in the proof of concept basically divided time in four different steps and uh, show that we we can do this classification 
uh, which is a bit de demanding. Uh, it's not an ordinary classification problem. Uh, and why is that? It's that classes are very similar. Uh, an early class, when it is about to transform into the second class, uh, it's basically just minutes between them. Uh, which also can be seen in this uh, graph, where you have the uncertainty in black, uh, where you see that in the near closeness to the different classes, you get a big uncertainty, uh, which can be used also to be able to do better classification. So in this, the classification could be that we have seeds, we have sprouts, we have small plants, large plants. Uh, that's not probably <laughs> how it will be classified in the end. But looking at this, uh, we build a proof of concept that uh, shows that this can be achieved. We can get quite uh, we can get infractions of day when doing the classification when we include this that is it's a time series of images that we analyze and using that information we can get to really high accuracy which uh, hopefully we will end up uh, in this innovation process going from this proof of concept where we have seen the possibility we have seen the challenges of this particular application and that there is an interest to explore this further uh, both by the end user in this case Holman but probably more companies also that you can uh, gather expert knowledge into interpret when to do what with the plants uh, increasing the quality of the plants increasing the productivity uh, of growing the plant so we're looking at uh, creating an uh, innovation project out of this seeing how plantation can take this technology further uh, developing services products around this uh, also looking at more the challenging part of these classifications uh, to see how we can solve that and also perhaps look at how the end users can use this technology to be improve their business. So I think this is a really good example of uh, an industrial need meeting or need for new knowledge, new uh, ideas uh, meeting the innovation system, meeting the university, that can lead to something good. Uh, yes. Okay. Do we have any questions from the audience? I'm a bit curious. Uh, why do Mid Sweden University want to cooperate with companies? Uh, one thing is that uh, the innovation landscape is built around that, which we should collaborate with industry, with companies, organizations. Uh, I think also it's a very good uh, thing for research to be exposed to real problems, to be able to see what, from theory, what works in uh, reality and what doesn't work, what needs more work. Uh, so I think both the theoretical work and this uh, applied work needs to be there to be getting forward and also identifying new research challenges. Yeah, thank you. And Johanna, wha what is the long term goal with your collaboration with Mid Sweden University and other innovation hubs and so with this development? What is your goal? Our goal is to yeah, develop our technology and be able to uh, collaborate with uh, the research uh, areas in and uh, the competen competences that they have that and we can all like, contribute to achieve new, new models and new innovations. Um, and uh, our goal is to be able to uh, extend our uh, offer to, to the market and uh, secure uh, positive development for the industry. Yeah. Do you have any advice for companies who are in the starting position? They are interested in develop their products with AI or other technology? 
do you have any advice how to start, how to get going? Well, I think it's uh, important to very uh, early kind of uh, verify the need in the market and have a close dialogue with your users, your future users, and uh, then also be open to collaborations and uh, not have the uh, idea to do everything by yourself. Um, yeah. Great, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So, yeah, we have a question here. If you also combine the data, yes, or is it pure uh, image, uh, image uh, comparison of, of images, or uh, do you combine the data with other type of sensors or examination of, of, of the plants? When you see a plant that is not good, do you uh, take it uh, down in pieces and check <laughs> <laughs> what it is? And also, last year there was something about also that uh, plants were have uh, their their speech that they in Israel they have a thought that uh, the plants tell when they need water for instance do you combine this with other kind of sensors and also perhaps looking at the genetic code of the plants or something like that so it's or is it the future uh, and from my point of view I mean in this we have just looked at the images and yeah. uh, I think the future could include other sensor values and the system uh, status and so on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, I thank you both. And you thank will be you. here uh, in the end of the session and during the break if there comes up any new questions. So, thank you mm -hmm. so much. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> so, our second speaker is also a quite new company uh, that just started a collaboration with Midsvidi University. You will hear more about their story, and I welcome up <laughs> Per Segerström, CEO at Media Research. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, so who are we? Uh, yeah. uh, we are a regional company uh, with office in Östersund and Sundsvall. We've been in business for like 20 years. Uh, what do we do? We uh, retrieve, we collect, uh, we tag, we catalog uh, lots of advertisement and advertisement campaigns. And an obvious question for that is why do we do that? Uh, so that our customers don't have to do it themselves, because collecting the advertisement is, is really a boring part and it's a complex part to do uh, in, in the long run. And why do they need that, our customers? Because they need to understand what their competi competitors are doing. Uh, do they need to take action of um, anything that's happened around in, in their area? Uh, for future planning, for uh, get the uh, inspiration for new campaigns, uh, they can use our ad bank for that. Uh, we have customers in uh, five countries, Nordics and the UK. Uh, we work lots of semi manually today. We serve like 100 customers. Um, more, most of them are within uh, automotive, car brands, uh, telecom sector. Uh, so Volvo, Volkswagen, Telia, etc. is our customers. Um, so yeah. that's basically who we are. That's that who we are and what yeah. you do, yeah. A couple of years ago, you contacted Midsvidi University. You had a challenge. Yeah. What was the background to that? The background is uh, we had our customers for a long time. Uh, they're really happy with what we deliver to them, what we, we do for them uh, on a daily basis, and we need to scale it up. We can think of how can we scale this up. And of today, it's lots of semi-manually work within it. It's partly automatic. To serve more customers, we need to have a different approach uh, in how we uh, retrieve, uh, tag, uh, do some uh, package uh, and contributing with an offer to the rest and the com communication with more customers. Uh, and with that, we started to, to approach um, universities, how can we uh, work with this, uh, and then as Basically, it was a coincidence. I saw a, a press release, I think, from Matthias that they were in some kind of work that, that this could be us, I think. And I just emailed and then it started up with a short dialogue and we identified what we need and what they can help with. And then we just set up a process to in what form uh, 
uh, about recruiting. Yeah, so what did you come up with? What was the process? What uh, the process, uh, Matthias suggested different kind of what, what we could do together. Uh, but the first thing was like, we could get a PhD for you uh, and get this to a bigger project um, and develop together. Uh, and that's what we ended up with. Yes. And how has it been working out so far? Uh, very good. Uh, fantastic. Uh, the recruitment was, all right, where do we start? Where do we find a PhD? Uh, and I believe that that's what uh, the mid-university, mid-universitet will help us with. Uh, but it was a recruiting process and most of it, uh, all applicants were uh, foreigners. Um, so we just tried to find the right profile for us for this project and we found FISA. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I think that is a good uh, transfer for to FISA Sakraya Pur Sayad. <laughs> yeah. uh, she got one bo uh, foot in the business world together with you and one foot in the academia together with Mid Sweden University. So uh, now she will present her work, what she is doing at the company and in research. So, welcome yeah, up. Thank you. Good day, everyone. My name is Faiza Zakari Pursaiga. Today, I'm here to present what I'm doing for Media Research Company together with Mid Sudan University. Um, I would like to start my presentation uh, with these reports from Stanford University about, uh, about uh, actually, the Deloitte survey, they pulled 2000 and around 2,600 leaders around the world from different industries and with different uh, corporate levels. And they came into the conclusion that 94% of these leaders believe that AI is important for their overall success in their organizations. Also, uh, we can see that the majority of these leaders believe that AI can be uh, good to enhance the performance and job satisfaction. So we can see the state of AI uh, in enterprise is promising. Uh, but uh, yeah, also, also I would like to mention here that uh, among uh, the countries that increase the number of AI job postings, Sweden is on top of the list, uh, and it's it's going to be even more increasing in the coming years. I mean, uh, this graph is f uh, since 2014. Uh, but, uh, but maybe when you want to start to use AI in your company, maybe you ask, uh, what are the challenges that I might face when I start using AI? Again, according to the report by Stanford University, top three challenges that uh, uh, these leaders faced uh, in uh, 2022 was, first of all, proving business value, and then lack of executive commitment, and also choosing the right AI technology. And I believe that researchers can help you to choose the right technology because we know AI is fast-growing research field and every day we have uh, more efficient and uh, the better models. And so uh, choosing the right model and uh, choosing the best technology can be done, uh, can be done with the help of a researcher. Uh, but what does word AI mean, the artificial intelligence? Uh, according to the explanation from uh, Professor John McCarthy, who was the first AI faculty member at the Stanford University, AI means the uh, science and uh, engineering of making intelligent machines. But this AI is uh, categorized into different fields. It's not just uh, one field. So depending on your task, what you're going to do and what is your data, you might choose one direction here. As an example, if you have a voice and you want to convert it to text, uh, then you can go toward uh, text to, uh, you have a voice to, s then you go toward uh, speech to text. Um, now that uh, we know a bit about AI, I would like to uh, also show uh, what is the project that I'm pursuing in my PhD. Um, as the pair mentioned, uh, we collect advertisement and we tag them. So we gain, inf we, uh, we need to know, first of all, what is an ad? 
And then we need to know what is the information inside that, some uh, potential information like what is the company behind the ad, this ad, what is this ad about, or uh, any other pot potential information that we might need to present for our customers. And uh, the benefit of this project, uh, can it, it can have various benefits, like it can be used to uh, filter out unwanted ads, that is the <laughs> opposite of what we are doing, uh, or target relevant advertisement to users. And uh, the other benefit is that if we are able to automate this process, uh, as Pam mentioned again, we can uh, scale up what we are doing in media research. So uh, we can process more data. We have thousands of images per day that we have to process it fast. and. Uh, AI can help us to automate this process and do it faster. So we know computers are faster than humans always, uh, I suppose. <laughs> so uh, so uh, the first thing that I have to do to, uh, for this project is to identify the ad within the newspaper. Uh, so we just need the machine to draw something like this red line for us to say, this is an ad and here it has happened. But uh, what are the challenges that we face? Uh, the advertisement can be so similar to non-advertisement within a page. Also, uh, these advertisements can appear like in different parts of the page. It can be in the left or right. Or it can be small uh, or it can be so big even the whole page can be the advertisement. Uh, another thing is that the features that we have in this advertisement, they are complex and they're constantly changing. So you might need to, uh, sometimes you might need to develop over the time and uh, choose uh, the up-to-date models to handle these uh, complex situations. Uh, but uh, so um, now, what is computer vision? Um, when we have, uh, actually the research, uh, the computer, re uh, computer vision research aims to drive meaningful information from visual data, like the images or the videos. Here, I have image, so I need to explore computer vision techniques to be able to handle this uh, pr uh, project. Uh, also, we need natural language processing. Uh, what is natural language processing, or NLP? Uh, this research aims to uh, build the machines that can understand uh, human language. And as one of the obvious uh, examples that we all now are familiar with it, and it's so famous, is ChatGPT. Uh, the researchers in NLP have provided this for us. Uh, but why NLP is useful in my uh, case? Because uh, the information within the advertisement, it is natural language. So if you want to process it, you need NLP techniques to be able to process this uh, text. But now that we are familiar that uh, what are the techniques, I mean, what are the research directions, uh, so you have a researcher to help you in this regard, and uh, what is the steps that this researcher is going to do for you in your company? First of all, as a researcher, we start to define scientific problem. So uh, you tell what you want, and we start to think about it and ask some research questions. And then uh, we provide a scientific problem definition. And uh, then we start to gather data and clean data. Yes, we have data within the company, but it's not always clean, and uh, we call it raw data. Uh, and uh, we need to know. Uh, we need to use some parts of this data for the processes that we are going to do within the research. And uh, then, so for example, I am developing different machine learning models uh, with uh, on this data set that we have, and we have gathered and cleaned. And uh, yeah, the process is to now we have to train these different models, and we have to evaluate it with respect to different metrics that we have. And then we will have the predictions. Once we are satisfied with the results and we see that the, uh, uh, according to all the metrics, uh, we are gaining good uh, accuracy, then we can put our model into production and we can use it for the commercial use in the industry. And uh, what I have done so far is that I have uh, implemented uh, the algorithm, uh, so I mean, as I mentioned, some machine learning algorithms within AI that gets the image, newspaper image as an input, and uh, that red part is uh, what 
uh, is the output of my model, which says 95% this is an advertisement. Um, so, um, so we know that AI is transforming the way we work, we live, and we educate, and uh, it is important to use it in our, uh, especially in our companies, and uh, it has different fields, and researchers can help you to choose the right direction in this AI uh, with respect to what you need in your company. Um, yeah, thank you for your attention. If there are any questions, I would be happy to answer. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> are there any questions from the audience? Yeah. Yeah, I have a question. Are you only looking? Are you only looking for uh, the direct ads that is paid for, or are you also looking for commercials that is hidden, so to speak? Like if it's a photo for a uh, sports game or something, you have commercials in the photo from uh, different companies. Uh, I, I think I didn't give you a question. You mean uh, uh, what what kind of images we look in the company overall? No, what kind of commercials you're looking for? I mean, ah, okay. So uh, oh. I mean, y the examples you had that is paid in the newspaper, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but then also you have in pictures from, for example, a sports game, mm -hmm. you have commercials in the pictures that is paid to the sports arena or something. <laughs> are you also looking for those? Or uh, these are, uh, we are not looking uh, for that, but these are some cases in the research that uh, we might uh, like consider it when we are uh, working with the data. Like we, we had some, uh, some, some kind of similar challenges in the data when we were looking and collecting and deciding what to pick up for the test that uh, media research need. So that's not the need of media research now. Hello. Uh, Hello. How can you tell the diff? I mean, some some ads uh, basically look like an article. Or mm. So how can you how can you tell that it uh, that it is an ad, or can you do that? So I don't do it. The machine is doing it, and <laughs> so, <laughs> so the point is, uh, we don't know what's happening within the model exactly. That's the problem with deep learning. We have huge amount of data, and we can use this deep learning on this data to derive information. But uh, how the machine understand exactly, uh, or exactly what feature it's focusing on, uh, we don't know it. I I don't know. Yes, I, I had a, a similar question a little bit. Basically, a main challenge is to to separate, dis discriminate an advertisement from another mm -hmm. picture. Do you have any idea what kind of success rate you can have? That means if the machine predicts it's an ad, it's really an ad. And uh. how do you measure that? Oh, okay. So uh, we have when we are uh, we are using the data, we have two parts. Uh, we one of them is training, and one of them is testing. So when we want to test how it's working, actually, we have we have annotated some pictures, and we know what is the result, and we see the result from model, and we compare it with our uh, labels. So then we can decide if it's predicting good or not. So uh, um, uh, that part is also not uh, manually; it's with the machine. Do you expect uh, a success rate of, uh, let's say, 95% mm -hmm. or just 80%? What's what do you want to achieve, basically? Uh, so we can look at the prediction. If you mean uh, what is the threshold for the confidence that we consider, uh, if that's your question, we can uh, decide about it. Like we can see, uh, like for example, we see uh, the over the 50% threshold, si we can see that all of them are uh, true, the, the answers are true. So we can have a threshold with the confidence. So we say... Of the accuracy of the test. Of the, the accuracy, uh, it was more than uh, 90. Yeah. Hi. So, Hello. I understand that you are mostly uh, working on recognition of advertisement Somehow, right? yeah. uh, but then I'm um, kind of following the, this kind of line of thought there so some especially like car companies can have like it's per perhaps easier to find out like ads from Aldi so you have like the tags price tags etc but car companies 
can produce some kind of advertisements as like an art product or something. Mm -hmm. What do you do after you detect it and let's say categorized? Okay, this is one type of ad, this is another type of ad. What's the next step? Uh, next step, like... Uh, uh can, can, can I yeah. put something in there? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, most the most interesting part is research-wise. Uh, Business-wise, from my side, uh, it's when, when we find we're going to put an accuracy uh, below or, b or above that, that will be good enough, and it's a learning process. But when it comes to the specific, uh, they call native ads, uh, when it's hidden article, uh, and there are regulations often around those. It, it has to be marked in some countries, this is an advertisement feature, it says. Uh, but that maybe it doesn't apply to all the markets. Uh, so to learning to understand what is really, what, I what is the uh, key figures in this that most likely is an ad, that is a challenge. But th we have some features to work with. And uh, I think, did you also mean that like what, <coughs> why do we, I mean where do we use these tags maybe? Was that your question? To do, what to do next? Okay. Oh, okay. We we provide insights yeah. for our customers <laughs> after that. Yeah, yeah. Make everything searchable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not a research question. Rather, if you have a good model, AI model, and and you start to classify all kinds of data like this, would it be possible to change business model to in some way charge for visibility? not paying for an ad, but even if it goes into other news media and so on, that, that you could really put a cash flow from everything. Mm. Uh, where, where it's, you know, seen, Volvo is seen. Aha, we would like to uh, charge for that. <laughs> well. uh, <laughs> every, every, everything that, that we can uh, identify as a value to our customers. And uh, of yeah. course, if, if we can provide them with that, uh, that is I an interesting next step to everything. We're not there yet, but uh, I, I really do hope that, and, and that was how we started this project, um, what do we want to get out of it? We have these first steps, how can we identify, etc. But where does it take us? What can technology do more? And what kind of business or revenue would that generate? We are open just to anything, and we are in discussions with the customers. Okay, are there any more questions? One more, yes. <laughs> uh, your examples was uh, ba basically only uh, newspapers. Yeah. Do you scan also like Facebook, uh, Google? Uh, yeah, yes. in the company we do that. We, uh, we explore uh, even TikTok. Yeah, um, um, uh, this specific test is just to identify a channel newspaper. Uh, but we have uh, online ads, uh, YouTube, Facebook, social media, uh, TikToks, uh, display mm -hmm. ads, uh, traditional TV, uh, newsletters, uh, other flyers. We monitor some certain website campaigns, sites. So our customers spend more and more money in more and more channels. Channels. Uh, channels. Uh, so they just keep on asking, is another channel, can you monitor that as well? Uh, and the challenge for us is that we can keep on serving our existing customer. We've been having like the same customers for 15 years, about 100, but we want to scale it up. And if it's possible to scale up, we need to approach uh, with a different method. And that's the part with the university yeah. and the research. We, yeah. we need the automatic. Yeah, one. once we found a solution, we can put it like the input is image, so we can change to another input. Uh, I have got uh, one question. Do we have some kind of, of a synthetic customer? Because you know what I see on my on my internet pa web page is completely different that that you guys see, and this is uh, you know probably you know uh, you should emulate and see what <laughs> what if it's target. Oh, I think it's a it's a proper word targeting. Do you emulate those or plan to do those? It, it, it everything is really tricky uh, because, as you said. Uh, I see a difference in uh, demography. Um, and, there, uh, and there is always regulations that try to avoid. You can have ad blockers, you can have whatever it is. Um, uh, I when it comes to online, we, we buy the raw data 
from a global supplier and that gives us uh, that doing this and they have uh, crawling and they have uh, big human panels and they do robotics uh, so they have actual profiles and they do robot robotics uh, and they combine uh, and we find most of it uh, but depending on if at this stage our target customer isn't the local or re regional uh, ICA store maybe it's not possible but for Volvo for uh, Telia for nationwide campaigns we find it okay. yeah okay thank you any more questions <laughs> So I have one question for you, Faisal. <laughs> so why did you apply to be an industrial PhD student? So it's a good opportunity, I think, to work at, I mean, it's good to know where your research is going to be used and uh, how, like, you feel like, okay, I'm doing something that is uh, going to gain some benefits uh, in some business. So I think it's so exciting. And uh, it's good that when I, for example, uh, have meetings with company, um, I also learning some business related uh, stuff in, in, in uh, I mean, within the research that I'm doing with academic phase. So it's, I have two, two different experience now and I think it's good, that's why. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I also have the same question for you, uh, Tar. What, what is uh, your advice for companies that is in your position a couple years ago. Yeah, uh, first uh, to identify what, what you need. Uh, and from my perspective, I, uh, I thought some, I, I had my vision of uh, the university, they work only with, with uh, SEA, Volvo, big companies, etc. Uh, but when I saw that, uh, when you saw the, the news, you said he's addressing smaller companies and there isn't that many big companies in our region. So uh, we were like, uh, it's also for us. And we're like uh, six employees and uh, regional working and um, have production in India. That's, you see, my manual uh, work we do. But um, we, can f we can find regional collaborations. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think our time is up now. But um, there will be more time in the break now. We have 15 minutes break to talk to the speakers. And at 11.30, we will have another presentation here about how you can visualize your data better to get a better impact of your work. So I thank you all. Thank you all speakers and for the audience. And I welcome you back in 15 minutes. Thank you.